I'm a bit watcher of your videos myself. Um, mm -hmm. I really like I really like what you've done. I really like the style. I like how some of them are a quick two minute thing. Others are a bit longer and you carry it through, don't you, through your day. Um, yes. So we can literally see what you're up to. Yeah, yeah. And we're doing filming today as well with the team. Um, oh, really? So we are, the run through of my day this morning was a conference call with mentees at eight o'clock, a conference call with my mentees at lunchtime. I've just served court action. Thank you very much. Uh, on one of my tenants, woohoo! Um, we have <laughs> our guys um, doing some filming for the YouTubes today, and uh, uh, some other stuff as well. Oh, and that's a call that just came in because we wanted to sell a plot of land for eighty grand, and it is tip three o'clock. There we go. Uh, Busy. Uh, yes, uh huh. So it's all um, fairly full on in property. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I was going to come on to that actually. So, for those that don't know who you are, uh, could you give a bit of background? So, who are you? Where did you start in property? Um, like, where have you come from, really? Uh, uh, we've been going for over a decade now, so we, we've got a pretty decent level of experience. We, uh, I started off by just wanting to buy houses for my family for safety and security. Uh, it's a bit of a bug. Once you can do that, you're going to continue. So if you can buy discounted or wholesale or BMV, below market value houses, yeah. and if you can uh, work with investors so that you can raise money to buy those houses, really you don't need to stop. So um, we ended up sourcing over 200 deals, 45 million pounds worth of property that we got an agreed purchase price of 30 million quid. I have quite sizable portfolio, single lets, multi lets, built houses, houses, flats, planning gain, um, HMOs, shared houses and service accommodation uh, and then a number of years ago I was asked could you teach me and I was like who? Uh, so we've got a very successful mention program our guys get really good results at the moment it's fully sold out our face-to-face -face, but there's a waiting list and we also have online mention program and then I also produce tons of very very good quality online material because um, I want other people to achieve you know the same kind of thing or more than than we've done so yeah. we've been a sourcing business and um, we've done tons of buy to sell we own a large portfolio we do holiday lets single lets multi lets we've built houses split houses split land uh, yeah. and we uh, we run high quality education programs as well and those are some of my houses behind me so. oh well so you were just saying that um so you kind of um look at a mix of strategies you don't really go for one thing you don't tunnel vision and just repeat 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 the same thing um you said you got hmo service accommodations yeah i did in the early days in the early days i did two things and two things only i saw deals and i worked with private investors and then the outcome of that uh, can be buy to sell or buy to let and um, but i was extremely competent and my team were extremely competent at how do we get discounted deals that stack up, you know, 45 pieces of research? And how do we work with investors, whether they lend money or we do joint ventures together, buy and sell together? And sure. then um, I started off, like many of us, with single lets, then moved to multi lets, and then grew a portfolio of service accommodation. And then along the way, did, you know, houses to flats, planning, splitting, building houses, that kind of thing as well. But the two key skills were sourcing discounted deals and working with investors. And, and, and then you're good to go, really, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. So would you say, is it best um, to do HMOs down the line for ad advanced investors? What would you say, start off single lets? Or does it really just depend on the deal and what money you need to put down and I your think, involvement? I think uh, from a matter of fact of fear, from the matter of fact that um, people are no, you know, like I literally have just filled out a form uh, to uh, to go to small claims court to get a tenant's rent paid. It doesn't bother me at all. And obviously, we haven't we, we've filled it out. We've sent them a screenshot. Uh, they will have paid by the close of play today, and I'll never need to submit it to Money Claim Online. This is basically, mate. You've had all your letters. You know, if you don't if you don't pay, I'm going to submit it. So he he's like, oh, sugar, you're serious. Now I have no emotion around that apart from like, oh. You know, I'd rather drink yeah. a coffee than fill out this form. But I think in the early days, you get a bit nervous about that kind of thing. So mm -hmm. I would definitely suggest your first one would be a single let. Um, so that you're, you know, and you sign up to somebody like the RLA or the oh, NLA. Okay. We're a member of the NLA. So that you fully understand all of the lettings processes. And then you want to be doing stuff. I mean, I want you to have a rule that every single house brings in a thousand pound net. And that's mainly HMOs and service accommodations. Sure, sure. So... 
there's more talk about serviced accommodations. I know that I've looked into that a bit more. Would you say, I know that works slightly differently. It's almost like the hospitality, hotel oh, yeah. industry. Um, yeah. so would you say that's quite big for a beginner? Would you say still just no. try and do a small single let or you can just do one single let that has at least a 10% yield as your first one. So yield is annual rent divided by purchase price. Oh, I'm in the office, by the way, if you can hear some noise behind us. So annual rent divided by purchase price. Yes, uh, 10% yield and make sure you uh, is 25% discounted so you can refinance it and get all of your money back out. And that will prove that you can source deals and get you know good money making deals i don't want anybody doing five percent yield it's a waste of time uh, it's largely a waste of time it's better than not doing anything at all but i don't want you to do it so yeah so would you say that um business that earns you a lot more money sorry jumping in yes no no sorry sorry to interrupt so would you say that um really you have to do spot deals and invest based on the maths so work out your yield if it's below market value what you can put down what you can refinance it even return on investment it literally comes yeah as simple as that yeah yeah okay so like emotions to one side and just think logically in a sense think logically on the maths and then also think logically who's going to pay you so if it's a buy to sell who's your customer type if it's a buy to let, who's your customer type? So um, would somebody that you anticipate being your customer want to live in this property, whether they're going to live in it forever because they bought it or whether they're going to live it um, for a period of time because they're renting it? Um, so as we're Bristol, almost all my portfolios within nine minutes of my office and my house. And do you notice, um, I do have some 17 minutes away. It's like, oh, no. But the great majority are kind of nine minutes. And that's because we're both my office and my house is city centre. And the majority of tenants want to live within a mile of the city centre. So where I've got properties that are over, I've got a couple of properties at like 2.2 miles out of the city centre, they're harder to fill because tenants don't generally, there, there isn't a high demand for tenants living that far out of the city. Sure, sure. So there are kind of, you have to think, what does the tenant want and tick those boxes? So if it's a family house, make sure, is it like a family orientated area with good exactly. schools? Is it close exactly. to the centre for commuters? Exactly. Things like that. So and I I do working professionals, so tip, typically, I mean, I've got a wider range than this, but typically they're kind of, you know, mid to late 20s, early 30s. So without being at all cheeky, I'm looking for the avocado on toast cafe, aren't I? <laughs> and the the crushed avocado on toast. Mac toast egg. <laughs> yeah. So if I've got a crushed avocado on toast cafe nearby, game's a winner. Because those cafes yes. are in business because my client type is in the area. Yes. yes. Smashed yes. avocado on toast. That's what I'm looking for. I like that. I like that. Um, what about things like logistics? Um, like, so say you've invested in a serviced accommodation unit, so like a nice swanky apartment. I may have just lost you. I can't hear you. I'm sure you'll come back. Oh, there we go. That's all right. Need back, to come back. Back. Great. That's okay. Um, what I was saying was, um, so you've invested, you've chosen, right, serviced accommodation is for me, let's say. Right. Um, once you've invested that money, how do you go about the logistics, like finding a really reliable, good cleaner, um, things like that, ah. that just isn't said? Right. Cleaners are your, as, cleaners are what you live and die by in serviced accommodation, because your yeah. quality and your standards have to be five star at all times. So you've got two options, yeah. you can manage them yourself. If you do, and we did, we, we had a fairly sizable service accommodation portfolio that we ran for two years ourselves because we wanted to see the, the in and out of, of the business. In fact, I've just written a service accommodation pack, which will be out shortly on our website. Um, if you do, then your cleaners have to be amazing. If yeah. you don't, um, I mean, amazing, and you need substitutes. You know, if cleaner A is unavailable, cleaner B, cleaner C, cleaner D. Uh, and as soon as their standards slip, you need to uh, handbook on how they clean. And if their standards slip, you've got to have words with them quite quickly to keep the standards up. If you don't, there are tons and tons of service accommodation management companies in the marketplace who are charging between a, a 12 and a 15, sometimes a 20 percent management cheat fee and then you hand over all the management to them because if you manage in-house even if you communicate tons to your guests like you know here's the code to check in here's the code to check in here's the code to check in what will happen is you'll get a phone call at like 11 o'clock at night going i can't check in i can't check in and you're like 
did you read the code? Yeah, you know, and he's like, yeah. oh, really funny. <laughs> read your yeah. email or read your text. So um, I think you want to be managing service accommodation for a period of time just to understand the process, and then you want to hand it over to a service accommodation company who will take 15%, and you think that is money well worth paying for. Sure, sure. Okay. So, yes, so this is one type of strategy, service accommodation. What about um, more generally? So I know from some of your YouTube videos that I just myself have personally watched, mm -hmm. um, and you say that half of the battle is mentally, which I completely agree with, um, yeah. is getting yeah. away from your nine to five day, this, oh, I've only got so many hours in a day and oh, like, oh, property, like that doesn't work. You can't become financially free through that. So someone like me, uh, yeah, exactly, you can. Someone like me who mentally, I feel like I've gotten over that barrier um, yeah. and I resisted a nine to five. So it was so easy for me to just get a grad job and, you know, join the rat race. Um, and I've gone into business, but then doesn't that almost take you a step back in property because it's harder to lend now so now I'd be classed as self-employed and you have to get your tax returns and your pay slips and when you take a step back I, I heard you right up until when you take a step back and then it's frozen you, am I back yep you're back now there you go when I, you, I hope you're up to when you take a step back yes yeah, so when you take a step back um and and resist the nine to five and do your own thing it seems harder to lend from the bank and and harder in property because your tax returns um or your pay slips are irregular um it's just not the same as the nine to five so how do you then go about that is it still doable yes of course it is so uh, either you get a financial advisor who picks up the phone and speaks to the bdm the business development manager the operation director the sales director or even the chief exec and goes I've got a funny one here, <laughs> like um, an unusual case where the computer will say no, but I'd like you to say yes. Or you say, well, I don't need to be borrowing from the banks. I can borrow from private fundraising. If you are the person that can find a 200,000 pound house for 150,000, there's going to be plenty of people that are going to want to fund that because there's plenty of profit in it. So okay. you run that fundraising campaign at the same time. So, so there's two routes, isn't there? There's formal routes, the banks, and then there's informal routes. As long as you stay, make sure you stay above the law, everything's done legally, people's money is properly and correctly protected, uh, and all the money laundering checks are done, et cetera, et cetera. Then there's nothing to, I mean, I've bought millions of pounds worth of property with private finance. I've, um, they earn good interest. And then I refinance it with the bank because once you've bought it and you've got tenants in, you can show the ASTs or the individual room rent uh, 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 agreements and you can show the rent coming in through the bank account. Then you're going to have plenty of commercial banks that are going to want to refinance you afterwards. So your investor um, lends you money in the beginning. Thank you. Mm. They earn good profit from it, good for them. And then because you bought it discounted, you refinance out with the banks. At that point, they're not so worried. About, I mean, they still want to look at them, but they're not so interested in you. No offense in any shape or form. They're much more interested that you've now created, you know, like this cup of tea is ready for you. Yeah. It's not got a tea bag anymore. It's cup of tea because you've got the tenants in there. They're paying the rent. The agreements are in place and the bank account is showing the money coming through. It's a fully flat business that they're lending on. So lend. now always check with your financial advisor before you were buying a property with private finance, always check that they're pretty sure they're gonna get you a mortgage. You don't wanna be stuck up an alleyway, but that's how to do it. That's how I would do it. Okay, sure. So is it still possible, um, maybe from your experience or your knowledge, educating other people to borrow from a bank with more irregular pay slips that might be higher or lower or tax returns as a self-employed person that, that don't date as back as two or more years is it still doable can you find ways to yes and um, you're going to need to look at, at your, you need to have a strong financial advisor who's whole of market so you're looking for a whole of market independent financial advisor um who isn't just going to go to the three you know Halifax and go computer says no if you've got a computer says no financial advisor they're not right for entrepreneurs anyway you know I was, yeah. I was a multi-millionaire still paying myself like 800 pounds a month right so I don't look wealthy in terms of cash or I didn't look wealthy when I was still doing that in terms of cash flow but I had millions of pounds worth of assets so any entrepreneur needs their accounts not explaining in a bad way, but just explaining. So your job is to recruit an A-list team and that includes a financial advisor. So if they're a computer says no, nah, 
not right for you. If they're interested in working with entrepreneurs and they've got a wide range of understanding of banks, then and you can find discounted deals, then great. You'll have a great financial advisor and they'll find you good products. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So it's just about getting the right person that understands your situation, yeah. really. Yes. Um, and so getting good what, discounted deals and you working with private investors as well. Yes, exactly. So I think options really are p equals power. You yeah. have options, you have something to fall back on or a safety. Yeah. Something. So um, how really, so for beginners, because this is geared more towards people who want to go into it, yeah. where, how yeah. do you go for it? Um, what logistics do you need to start? It's one thing watching a video on the internet and it's one thing going for it. Like what, what do you need to start? You need a cup of tea and a phone and an internet connection and a computer and that is it. Yeah, yeah. And you need to get on it and do it. So write a plan. And um, for you, you'll definitely need to look at raising some finance. You'll definitely yeah. need to look at in, in, in improving or qualifying or deepening your skills on how to source discounted deals. Yeah. So then I want you to spend 30% of your time working on uh, finding deals. I want you to spend 30% of your time working on finding investors and qualifying those investors and 40% of your time working on your business. Uh, and if you measure, now I don't expect you to be doing a 40 hour week, young lady, <laughs> you're an entrepreneur. So we're talking 60 hours plus in the early days, okay? okay? So then you measure um, how many hours am I doing in property in the first place? And is 30% of my time on investors, 30% of my time on deals, and then 40% is just organizing my business. Because otherwise the whole thing will run away with you. You've got to make sure the back end of your business is organized for the front end. So. The 40% of your time is finding the right lawyer, the right bookkeeper, the right accountant, the right financial advisor, the right builders, the right plumber, the right washing machine repairman, you know, the right cleaner, all of that stuff. And then 30% is phoning estate agents, going to auctions, going direct to vendor, direct to landlord, direct to house. And the other 30% is every single person you know, plus every single person you've ever met through property, picking up the phone and saying, my name's Beth. I am going to be sourcing discounted deals. Uh, you might want to be working with me on deals like that. You don't need to have deals at this stage to uh, to then actually, um, you just say, look, I'm young, I'm hungry. So for you, you can't yet say I'm experienced. The word I want you to use is I'm a young, hungry entrepreneur. And I will be sourcing deals. Some of those deals I'll be selling on as discounted deals with a fee. I used to charge 5%. So if it if if it was three hundred grand, that's fifteen grand for you. Now that would do, wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> some of those things you need to qualify them, make sure you're legally compliant. Um, you're going to do some buying and selling together, so that's a joint venture. And some of them they might lend you money again. Make sure you've got all the legal uh, pro uh, processes in place. Some of those deals you're going to be borrowing money, and uh, you're going to borrow the money, uh, refinance it, pay the investor back off, and put the tenants in. So, a phone, a computer, an internet connection, and a cup of tea. Yeah. That's how you get started. Yeah, I, I like that. I like that. That's really, really good advice. Um, just lastly then, to kind of sum up, I know that I, for instance, have been looking at deals, but you can fall into, like, over-analyzing. So, yeah. looking... And how do you differentiate the good deals with the bad deals? How do you know it's a good deal? Is it literally working out the yield or ROI and yeah. using your logic? Yeah. Yield, return on investment, and um, payback time, money left but in. And then I want you to do, and I don't want you to do analysis by paralysis. I want you, while you're on the phone to the estate agent, I want you to have money, uh, money, uh, sorry, mass price, right, move or zoopla up. I want you to look up 20 solds and be furiously scribbling them down and get your computer, your phone out and get, you know, add them up. I want you to look at how many are on the market trying to be sold and write them down. And I want you to ask the estate agent, what do you think this is worth done up? And then um, after, uh, then you make a decision there and then I'm, am I going to go and see this property immediately? Yeah. Am I going to see it or am I not going to see it? And then once you've decided to go and see it, you go see it within half an hour to an hour of hearing about it. So what you don't do, a beginner mistake that I see with my mentees and people I teach on workshops is, um, I see the mistake where basically the, um, the, they get on the phone to the estate agent and then they say, could you please now send me an email? No, 
No, you do the math straight away, then you go see it. And then you take a note of everything that is inverted commas wrong that you need to renovate in the property. You have an idea of what it's going to cost to renovate and then you just do your double check and then you put the offer in this afternoon. So let's just say you speak to the agent at 11 o'clock, 20 minute call. You've done the maths on the call. You're out seeing the property by 12. You've, I, I give a property viewing recorder to my mentees so that they can use that system to identify exactly what's wrong with the property that needs fixing. And then by about one o'clock, I've got a rough estimate of what the refurb's going to cost. I've put in a verbal offer, an email offer and a written offer by letter. So 11 to 1 is phone call viewing offer. That's how you get deals, speed. Having done your analysis on the phone call and then done some secondary analysis after you've seen the property, maybe phone another five estate agents to take their opinion on what it's worth and then you offer on it. And then you sure. go. It's quite good fun. Yeah, yeah, that sounds good. So before all of this, you, you go to the bank and in your pocket you have your mortgage offer. So yeah. you are ready to go? Yeah. A dip. So I don't do that anymore because I know I'm going to get mortgages. But if I was in your situation, I would definitely do it. It's called the dip decision in principle. Most companies don't charge you. Every now and again, a company will charge you. But for you to be less nervous, it'd be useful for you to have a decision in principle to know how much you can spend. Or more importantly, you've got investors who've already legally agreed to lend you money. So you know how much you can spend, Get which is why... 30% deals, 30% money, 40% the business. You don't go all out, get deals, and then go, ah, ah, who's going to fund me? You've got to run it at the same time, Beth. That's what it's like being an entrepreneur, really. It's a, just a lot of multitasking and balancing a lot of yeah. plates at once. But also checking back and saying, am I on track? You know, did I go all out and feel like a property investor because I was kicking the walls of a property? Or did I spend a load of time picking up the phone to people I've met hoping that somebody would fund me? And yeah. a real property investor spends a load of time talking to investors. You know, like I raised a million quid once in four hours. I did two hours phone calls, had a cup of tea, and then did two hours phone calls and raised a million quid. But it was I didn't really raise it in four hours. I'd done loads and loads of relationship build in the many, many months preceding. So those people really knew that I knew my yeah. stuff. And that... You know, if you can raise a million quid in four hours, you've laid down the groundwork of being able to raise finance as a property investor. So as soon as I have a deal in, you know, I can pick up the phone and get the money because so many relationship groundwork pieces have already been laid down. Um, yes. Since I had the need of 100 grand, and I wouldn't normally advise this, I don't think texting and email counts as a touch point, but I thought what I'll do is I'll send a text out to three of my investors and then I'll phone them afterwards so that they're not feeling like I'm just like, hi, I need money. You know, they've had time to consider it. So I just sent a text out and said, look, I'm looking for, I think it was like 140, something like that. And within an hour, two of the three had said yes. And I had to refuse the second one and say, that's so sweet of you, but I'm sorry someone else got the first. Yeah. That's not because you should be fundraising with a text. It's because I'd had loads of conversations with them previously. They'd seen lots of my deals. They'd seen my credibility, you know? Yes, definitely. So really the, the the key to scaling up is you learn through your first one, your first two, and then it's almost like repeating the process of yes. raising funds. But don't, and... Totally, but don't let it get out of sync. Don't do 90% deals and 10% and investors because then you're going to run out of money. So 30% deals of your time, 30% money and 40% working on your business means you don't get out of sync and it's not like you're not limping going, oh, sugar. You know, yeah. and we've all done it. We've all done it. Everybody loves to do the deals and feels really uncomfortable on, on the investors. Yeah. Well, that's amazing. I don't want to take up any of your more of your time, but that was incredible. I really liked that. Yeah. I will be going through this with a fine tooth comb, like yeah. writing everything down, analyzing. And analyze your diary every single week. Did I spend so enough time on each of those three areas? And if not, how do I readjust yeah, yeah. my diary for next week? Because your resource, your time is the most valuable thing you've got, Beth. So identify where you're going to place it. And that's why you'll be successful. Yes, definitely. And just taking action. So picking up the phone, going to the bank, getting investors, because it's just it, yeah, it's just so many people and too many people watch the videos and, and listen. They say, Yeah, I will, I will. Um, now so set yourself for KPIs. You're gonna phone twenty people every single day. You're gonna phone ten estate agents every single day. Some yep. performance indicators, KPIs, and then did I do them? If, if not, if, if, I have to do more tomorrow. All right? Yeah.
Um, actually um, took on your advice in one of your videos about the one, three and five year plan. Um, yes. And I have mapped that out. So yes. I've done the KPIs, I've done yes. the yes. where where I get to. It's just, yes. it's just gaining the knowledge. Yes. Like, and then just doing more, okay? Good, good. And staying consistent and realizing it doesn't all happen overnight. Yeah, definitely. Thank, thank you so much. This is so valuable. Thank you so much. Thanks for chatting. Um, and yeah, if you ever want to reach out and just yeah, let me know if you ever want to. Um, I can help you anyway. And thank I'm, you. Can help you. If you um, and if we will have a good look at the YouTube video, it'd be really enjoyable. Uh, and do think. Yeah. If you ever want to come and be a volunteer and hang around us for either workshops or mentoring and then you have to make loads of cups of tea and coffee cut up loads of cake but um, then you kind of get the education for free if you did just send just phone up julie she works eight till two and ask for an application form because that okay, way yeah. you got free education sure sure i and you mentioned that you're based in bristol yes is that right yeah okay sure. yeah i would i would love I'll, I'll be watching all of your videos i watch them anyway yeah. so yeah. i'll be Look, keeping yeah, tabs yeah, what you're yeah, making films oh. right now hello right because i've got a call um see you yeah. soon thank you so much thank you so much have a lovely day bye